The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Hi folks, Basil Chapman here on this Wednesday, the 4th of October. <clears throat> so before I get going here, just wanted to show you the power of the 200 period exponential moving average. Look, this is the E-mini 10 minute chart. It went, let me scroll back and look at this pink or orange line. So how do you see it in the, in the uh, Tiger TV? Uh, this orangey color. Look how, and in fact, I'll squeeze it even more. Look how it's been a resistance level for so long. I, I'm just scrolling back. In fact, um, October, that'll be the from there. That'll be the, uh, it's at 6.10 in, uh, in the morning, no, in the evening, on the 1st. So we can go back and back and back. Look, it was support, it was support, it was support, and then it becomes a resistance level, a support level for hours, hours. And then it breaks down and it becomes a repellent zone. Repel, repel, repel. All the way through uh, 5 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 22, on the 3rd of October. Repel, repel, repel. Then all of a sudden it pops above it this morning, uh, early this morning. Or was that yesterday? Yesterday, yeah, yesterday, 3 o'clock, 5 o'clock. And then it gets repelled again in the peak E in the Chapway methodology. Keeps trying to get back, can't get back, can't get back, gets repelled, gets repelled. Oh, look at this. All of a sudden, it comes back. And I said to uh, uh, to folks in the den this morning, what's the 42.78? Actually, now that's at 72, uh, uh, 42.76. Watch it because it's a magnet level. Will it become a propellant, a repellent, or just a plain old magnet? Well, it was a magnet for uh, from 7 o'clock till just after, until about 10 o'clock. And this bar right here, and now it's turned down sharply, and we're at 42.62, uh, only down 250. I shouldn't say only because these uh, turn downs tend to accelerate. But isn't that, isn't that nice that you can use a, one particular indicator? You don't have to do anything. You don't have to measure. You don't have to do. You just visualize, and it says, "Whoops, that's going to be." It looked like for a moment it could become a propellant zone, magnet zone, repellent zone. So the next thing uh, that you'll see at 4260 uh, right now is that there's going to be, have to be a lot of work, not for it to touch the 4276 level, but to climb above and cheat that as support. So as it stands right now, what we're seeing is yet another weekday that Dow's down uh, 71. S&P's only down two and three quarters. It's just interesting that we've seen so many divergences. Now I want to show you something that I think is really quite telling. Whoops, I did the wrong thing. Let me just do this. Oh, that was the wrong thing. This is the right thing. And click. Here we go. All right, let me show you something. So as it stands right now, let's use this particular indicator, right, this, this panel. So here we are. This has got the nine-period exponential moving average, and it's got the SMHs very close to turning pink, Hasn't turned pink yet, and the estimation is up 70 cents today, 143.75, holding pretty well. In fact, it's that NVIDIA that, look, it's up uh, just a 34 cents at 435.45, but it's holding above uh, the price. The It's right on the green, nine period moving average in the weekly chart, and there's the 14. It hasn't taken it out yet. Is it going to take, out, take that out, or are we going to see one more pullback? The... Uh, weekly chart of the it's in the SMH, the semiconductor ETF, maybe flips pink just for a moment and then it goes back like it did right here, back to green. We can see this is going to be very important. But look at this: the S and P yesterday went pink on the nine period moving average. That's the first time it's done that since that very brief moment back in just as we went into the January beginning of January. Um, so I'm watching this very closely. Look at the QQQ, so close, so close, but it hasn't done it. And the QNQ futures uh, also very close, hasn't done it. So the QQQ right now is trading up a dollar at 355.95. A little divergence here where the uh, Dow cyclical type 
uh, stocks pulling back some, and the uh, S&P is holding much better. Now let's get back to uh, our story because I wanted to show you something. We'll go through these one at a time. So this is the IAI. This is the iShares Broker Dealer and Security ETF. I believe that when this really starts to pick up to the upside, not the downside, but to the upside, we're going to see the overall market really start to improve. But it hasn't happened yet. And the dreaded H pattern, lowercase h, that goes breaks the left side low. And within two to three bars, cannot close above the left side high. In this case, I think it was about 91.80. Here it is at 88.11. And there's the 200 period exponential moving average. How important is that? Very important. Let me open this chart up. This is the iShares ETF. Look at this. Each rally is getting weaker and weaker, but yet it doesn't break the 200 period moving average. This is a daily. Look how important it is. It went under it briefly back in March um, of 2020. There's a weekly chart. We went long the very day, uh, was it the day of uh, the day after the low at 45? The low was 42.54. We still have that position, but we take a little bit off, a little bit off. And I want to see my subscribers get back into this or one of the key uh, brokerage stocks because that's the big, the next big move is going to involve them and it hasn't involved them yet. So I wanted to show you this the importance of the 200 period exponential moving average. All right, now there's a bunch of other things I want to do very quickly. Uh, don't have to spend too much time. This is the, um, let's go to the gold. Uh, gold, I was asked about when, when would be a good time to get into gold. I think we're getting closer and closer to a bounce in gold. The real move for gold, I'm going to have to see, give the dollar a little extra time because look, the gold, um, this is the gold continuous contract, the weekly chart, Nine is way under the 14. The price is way under the 914 and the 200 period moving average. The MACD is very weak. Stochastics at 17%, pretty weak. I'm suspecting that it goes into the single digits. Maybe it'll go into the single digits on the weekly because it's at 2% and flat in the daily. That is almost the equivalent of, it's, it is the equivalent of being at, say, 98% or 97.90% uh, on the upside. Where I always say if it's flat and holding, that's what you want to see if you're bullish. Well, in this particular case, gold is bearish here because um, it's holding flat at 2%. It hasn't had, and on balance form is extremely oversold, but it hasn't given a signal just yet. And that signal, I suspect, will have to have a retest, even if it's a nice pop to the upside. So that's the gold. Look at the silver. SI, here we go. Uh, SI is. At 21.17, down uh, 20 cents again, a lousy session. Uh, it's getting close to the left side low of importance, which is the week of the 10th of March at 20.69. Yes, I will. I have a quick look at the E-mini. Is this going to be the rally that um, really takes us back towards the, the uh, 42.76 level? No. First of all, it could be, but you've got to, you've got to surpass this daily. The daily. One minute chart at 42.70. I like the action here. I like the fact that you've had a measured move from the to the midpoint of the 200 period moving average and back down again. Uh, this is important. How it holds above 42.72 is going to determine whether or not we can test that 42.76 level again. Uh, I think it's a positive move, to you, but it might take away just a little longer. I'll be right back. Basil Chapman does down. Uh, 40 SMBs up almost four. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. 
The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. All right, folks, I just had a question about the VIX index. Yes, the VIX is, now, uh, this is leg C in the Chapman Wave, but I don't use that. I, I do the notations always in the volatility index. But this is the way, because it's an emotional thing and it, it's really kind of leveraged to emotion, I don't expect that it, because it's got the C right now, that it's going to pull back and then go to D. I actually happen to think that that's the case in this particular instance, that it is going to go to at least a D. And that could happen over the next coming days. Could happen even today. Well, today this is an egg C. But we could pull back maybe tomorrow, and then Friday is ugly, and then Monday is just horrible. And then we go to that D. Uh, it's kind of the scenario that I was looking for, but I was hoping that, not hoping, I was anticipating that there would be some kind of leverage to the upside today to kind of deflect so that we stretch this out. It isn't just one big cascade to the downside. We'll see what happens. The day is young. But in the meantime, I can just tell you this. If the VIX index trading is 16, at 19.43 right now, after 2.15 this afternoon, if it's pushing towards the 2022 area, the high today is 20.88. If it's pushing towards the, the low, low 20 area, 20.20 20 or so, and the, and the Dow's then down, um, I'd say triple digits, it could get to be an ugly close. I, I think there's just enough, there's enough wishy-washiness here to say, you know what? We don't want to have it all one way. We want to have some kind of a bounce. And I suspect that some kind of a bounce, even if it fails towards the end of the day, is, is possible here. It doesn't have to be all that big, but it could suddenly start to accelerate if the dollar, and let me go back to the dollar, which is now down uh, 34 ticks at 106.70. If it actually trades today's lows in the 106.50 area, if it can actually get to the 105.92 at the same time, the crude oil whoa, is down almost $3 at 86.39. Oh, man, I was looking at USC the other day. What a night. You? Was it? SEO, sorry, SEO. SEO, whoa, it's gone from the eight, uh, 16s to the 18s in a very quick couple of days. Uh, I'm watching this very closely because if we see that and we'll start to see the TLT, which is up, that's bonds, up 66 cents now with a horrible chart formation. 
if bonds are able to at least get to a plus one, plus 1.20, uh, I don't know about taking out yesterday's high, and that was TLT was at 86.65. Right now it's at 85. The high was today so far is 86.13. That's asking a bit much, but if it does that, then we could see all of a sudden we could start to see that maybe there's one, it's like an internal low will be made, uh, say, uh, this morning or yesterday, and then we get the residual low in a couple of days. Kind of the way I'm looking at it based on, oh, I'll, I'll have to show this chart. I wasn't going to show this chart just yet, but I'll show it because it's now becoming more and more important. Here's the Dow. Here's what I show subscribers every single day. I show the Dow with these three charts, three panels. The one is the Dow with the 9, 14, and 20 period moving averages and the shadow wave notation in a couple of lines. The next one's exactly the same thing. I'll just show a little bit because all you need to see is where is it now. And that shows you that the uh, nine, the nine pink nine is way under the 14. The uh, MACD, look at the space in that MACD, it is huge. And it's still expanding. The histogram's expanding. That's really not good. And the stochastics at eight, uh, is at nine percent, nine percent, and on balance volumes plummeted. It's trying its best to make a little bit of a turn, and it's really struggling. Here's the 120-minute chart, up way up here is the 200-period moving average of 34.274. In the Dow Daily, it's up at 33,874. But look at the way this has just come down, down, down. Um, and there's a cluster of support levels right here, which we're going to see if they're able to hold today. Um, and then I give a little synopsis of what we're looking at, why we're looking at it, have we had any Chapman Wave Roman candles or whatever it is that's involved in these particular candles and charts. But now look at this. There's a, there's a midpoint right here. I'll just draw it vertically so that you can see this. So there's a midpoint going right to the high of August the 1st at 35,679. That's where we went short. We're still short the Dow, although I still I, I keep trying to uh, buy a trading position. Occasionally it's, been, it's worked a couple, quite a few times. It didn't work yesterday or the day before. We'll see if it works today. And that is just for a balance to get a, just a real quick a bit of a gain and then we get out. That was a very small loss. But look at 32,586 on the 23rd of May. That low. Uh, so right there, that low is in exact proportion for the number of bars to the upside to the number of bars to the downside if by, what is that date? By the 6th, when is the 6th? Is that, what is it? 4, 5, 6, by Friday. Friday or Monday, there is another real sharp turn down from here. Whether or not we have a bounce. And when you're accelerating like this with these candles, uh, selling begets selling. Uh, let's be a little biblical about this. Selling gets, and look at the Chapman Wave inside wedge, target, support line. So it's all coalescing to come together at 32,586 round about Friday. Friday? Yeah, Friday. Um, and that's using my symmetry, the bar symmetry. I've had webinars on this. My last webinar was really based a ton on this and the 914 period moving average. How, how you can use that successfully. So right now, all the technicals are suggesting weakness, weakness, weakness. And there's a chance that um, in the next few days, we'll get a test of this low, not just this low here, which is above the 1st of June, which is at 33,061. But the one that goes all, yeah, 33,000, and then it goes all the way down to 32,586. That's what I'm looking at. This can extend. It could be very quick. It could be today. Who knows? But this is the pattern that I'm looking at. All right. With that said, um, let me get to a couple of questions that came in. So here we go. Uh, write them down. Yeah. So the question came in about the I, IBB, IBB versus, this is the IBB is the uh, biotech, this is the NASDAQ, Biotech ETF, look how it's taken out in a lowercase h goes to lowercase m and gets repelled to the inside track repellent zone. And now it's taken out sharply this week, the low of the week of the 10th of March of 120.72. All right, we're at 118. So PPH, 
PPH is the pharmaceutical ETF. Look at this move to the downside, a much more than a one-to-one -to, -one to the downside from the P. Remember, peak D in the Chapman wave, that's where we start looking to see how you're going to get a, a serious turn. Is there a continuation pattern to the upside? This, this is our objective is always to get you from a, a buy signal to a buy mode, which says you should go to at least a D. When you've arched over, you under the 200 period moving average in the weekly chart, the nine hasn't crossed negative yet. But it, it looks like it has. And this trend line, there we go, just a purely a, a visual trend line with these four candles right here. We we're about to test the support level right there, right? So, yes, it's pulling back. But I mentioned some time ago that I thought the IBB was much, much weaker. I'll talk about that and real estate in the IBB market here in the, in the Boston area, Cambridge and Boston. Ooh. Went through the roof and now it's up. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30 year T bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, folks. So basically what I'm saying is that the IBB seemed to me a lot more vulnerable. And if I'm looking around here at the new buildings here in Watertown, Mass, right by Watertown Corner, uh, there was this lot, I think it was MBTA, the, um, uh, the, this is the uh, transportation department. Uh, I don't know if it was their property or whatever, but this huge new building, all that whole area, um, all the buildings that have been renovated, refurbished, and this brand new huge building, so quite an interesting looking building, um, biotech, all biotech. And it's happening all over the show. And I, I suspect that 
uh, there's going to be a, an abundance, uh, an overabundance, uh, and, the, and the, something's going on telling me that when you see it in real estate, when the buildings become the edifice and the, 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 the uh, icon of your success in a particular field, you got to be a little careful. Um, and now what I'm looking at is that the PPH, and it's mostly because there have been a couple like Merck and uh, Eli Lilly that have done extremely well. Oops, not PH, but PPH. That is the ETF. That is a pharmaceutical ETF. And uh, as it stands right now, um, it's holding much, much better. The monthly chart says, yeah, yeah, I'm making a little bit of a double top, but so far holding okay. But I do see lower lows, and I keep getting asked about Eli Lilly. And Lilly seems to me to be um, at least a little more time to digest gains before it can have a, a really good counter trend rally. I mean, a counter trend rally because the top that was made, it's just under 600. Let me just check what the price was 601.84 on the 14th. Okay, six six zero one point eighty four uh, four on eight. I uh, was at eight. Yep, no nine nine fourteen. All right. So what we're looking at is it's down at the five, almost the five hundred. Yesterday, I almost hit. I almost lost a hundred points from that high. Um, I think that this is a is a buy, but later on. I just don't think it's a buy yet. It's just too much. This whole candle, we need to get into this candle. Then I think we have to look at it again. So, yes. Um, so, the next question came in. Um, uh, ASPN, was that what it was? Yes. So, the question here, if I can just find it, I have to scroll. Okay. Uh, hi, Basil. Uh, maybe luck, maybe experience. I closed all my ASPN leverage, short puts, long calls. On 929 ASPN, and I showed this to subscribers the other day because it showed up in my screamer list, but I didn't really want anything to do with it because it was a real tough one. So Aspen um, Aerogels, Inc., so laser, um, um, they, they're into lasers, uh, sensors, thermal insulation, I mean, you just want waste management, everything that you'd ever love to see in a stock in this particular environment, it's there. But it had this beautiful cup formation and screamed up to that E, which is above the left side lip of August. And then it went even higher. ASPN is the symbol. And then it made this leg F. And then I said, all right, we've got to be careful. It failed to get to the 200 period moving average. The on-balance volume gave a nice turnaround signal. And what date was that? That was 929. That was 929. Oh, ho, ho. Dan, very good. Perfect. And now it's shading from a high that was made at about... Uh, 898 was it 879 or something 879 is now trading today's low 713 that's a huge tumble so what I, I want you to show the stock to say this is one of the few in the area in this kind of sexy area of everything that you love to read about um, how it worked so well but others in that area that I know of didn't do anywhere close in fact they went to lower lows and now what we're looking at is um, Hold off, because now it's stuck in the range. So the question would be, where would you consider going back in? I would do the same thing that you did before. I'd start small, just nibbling. I'd probably use options just at, at first, but I would wait. I'd wait for this whole area right here between six, six, about 663 and probably 647. Let's see if that can be hit, and if it can hold. If it goes that far down, then this entire move up has been negated, and now you have to wait for another story. And then weekly chart says, ah, it's just an H pattern going to the second H, the lowercase H goes to a lowercase M, nothing to see here until we hit that lower level, which is in the sixth area. But in the meantime, let's just see what happens. I wouldn't rush in after such a big move. Now, the question came in, whoops, um, are you looking at, where would you look at the turnaround in the market today? Uh, what what would... I can't. I haven't got time to read it. What, what, what indicators would you look at? Well, first of all, I'd look at the crude oil. I'd look at the T bonds, and I'd be looking at the dollar. And if all of those come together, and the reason why I said we're going to go back in to a little bit of a, an aggressive position is we want some kind of a short-term game where we can either take profits or raise the stop or both. 
And then we'll see what happens because I think that that volatility index yesterday, oh, I can't do anything right now, can I? No, no, I missed it. Right there, when that nine crossed positive was a good entry point at 42.62. Now you're at 42.69, holding off the 200 period moving average. But I think that this is the mood. Is it 10 past 10.20? Yep, it's 10.36. So what, you remember 10.20 is where I always say, that's when you got to watch the move after 10.20. So we went to, yes, 10.20 on this E-mini was right here. And we kept coming down. And now we're above that level. And that says, now there are a new bunch of players in the market. They're the ones that have watched everything or they've already done some trading. This is a new mentality. That means that this low here of 42.54, 42.54 42, in the E-mini is sacrosanct. A close below that says, oh, man. That is horrible action. So as I see it right now, this is the cusp of the turnaround. What I would do is, I'll, I'll do it right now. I draw in from that lip, left side lip to this right side. I draw in the two patterns. One is a single leg A up failure pattern, which I don't think it's doing. And the other is a cup formation with bar symmetry, as I showed you on the, um, as I showed you a little while ago on, on the Dow. So this is the, I'd go to that midpoint right there. I'd move it to the right like that. And I would go to there. And it says by 10.45, there should be an attempt to get to uh, 42.77, 42.78. So what is it? 42.76. Remember I said this 200 period moving average is going to act like a magnet all day? Well, maybe we're moving up to that. The higher we go away from it after this particular early morning, I, I call it a collapse because uh, not so much in price, but in mentality, says, oh, now you can start to see a new bunch of players. All right? And that's all. It's just an intraday. It's not even that. It's more like an intra couple of hours play. All right, let's get back to our story here. I don't want to get too deflected. I love to show these patterns live. Okay. So as I so we've already covered that question. A couple of people have asked me about Tesla. Could I? T I've spoken about Tesla before as being the Apple of this particular era. Why? Because Apple was cutting edge technology, and then uh, with uh, Jobs, it was just. I mean, visually, even today with all the stuff they've done, but it was so brilliantly orchestrated. Um, to get everything, I'll talk about that in a minute, because you can't get an Apple product until you get a speaker that is perfect and tiny, that you get a microphone that's perfect and tiny, that glass that doesn't shatter, and they eventually did that. So I think that Tesla is in that area right now. I'll talk about it. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. 
Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. So uh, I had a question about uh, the Nikkei. Oh, let me just show you this. Remember, I drew this in while we were on air. I hope you saw it. I, I drew this in and I, I said, uh, I don't even remember if I was talking. There's a left side, right side price time match. And it should try to get, I don't know if it's going to do that, but it should try to get, I'll put an X in here. Uh, X and uh, I'm not going to put an X in here. Just this is the this is the pattern that I was looking at right here. We've missed it so far about a couple of points, but the flat stochastic and the MACD is all very good, and it's gotten too deep. Remember the objective in the Chamwe methodology: go from a buy signal to a buy mode, get you to a D, and here's your leg D, still leg D. You've got a whole minute to go before it gets cancelled. So we'll see. Oh, there it is. That is a peak D. Can it pop one more time to get to the left side high? We'll see. Anyway, the futures are up 725. <clears throat> I love to do these patterns. Uh, and I try to do them as as, I, as I'm trading because it just it helps me think it through, but visually and physically. Okay. So in the meantime, back at the ranch, uh, let's go back here. So, yeah, the Nick, I, I don't show what the question is. Oh, did I finish Tesla? No, I didn't. So I got distracted. TSLA. Let's just do that. Let's go back. We'll come back to the Nick, I, uh, which is right on the 200 period moving average in the continuous contract. Yeah. So I think that Tesla, so the maturity of Apple means that Tesla is still, I wouldn't say a baby. It's kind of a teenager right now. So it's at this point where certain parts of it want to do things that worry the parents. Um, and at the same time, it's building an infrastructure for itself, a way of thinking. I mean, once you're a teenager, you're, you're thinking that, that that's your thinking. So I think that Tesla, see, in the middle of the range in the monthly chart, did the one-to-one -one from the 449 in November of 2021 uh, down to the low. I think it was maybe January of about 100. Um, and, that, and that was... Um, where we saw that very nice move. It's in a, at a peak B. It's still a great peak B because the stochastic hasn't gone to 80%. It's at 73%. So within that context, what I am going to say to you is that I, I like it. Now, this is for people that have a kind of a portfolio that uh, you're trying to build. I, I wouldn't even say a legacy portfolio, meaning that you'd be able to hand it over to your kids like an Exxon for people in the 1900s who used to hold them. I still have some people that I'm uh, that one or two are still subscribers who had Exxon given to them as as uh, inheritances, and they've kept it. And one one uh, one person that I actually worked with a long time ago in one of my web in my one of my webinars had Exxon. And I said, if you're a little nervous about it, why don't you use the dividend to use as your tool for the market? But keep your Exxon, the core Exxon. I mean, it gives you dividends. It's fantastic. That's the way to do it. And I, I, I'm not sure if she still has it, but that, that would have been the thinking there. So as I'm looking at this, what I'm saying to you is that 
This is a different category. Very short term, it's just stuck in a range. It's stuck in a market range, and it's actually done really well when you think about what the market's done and what Tesla's done. So looking out for a couple of people that uh, mentioned Tesla, uh, what about it? This is your core portfolio. I would put some of it, if you haven't got any at all, I put some of it in my portfolio. And believe me, this is the one where you, there's nothing that you can say, put it in and don't worry about it. But put it in and only monitor it every three months. That's the way I would look at Tesla. I, I think that they've got, I mean, they're the leader in the field. Um, there's going to be a lot of competition, but the leaders usually stay leaders for quite a while. Not only that, they've got this whole venture that goes into the electrification, uh, the grid and everything else. So I, I like them, and that's what I meant by the Apple, because Apple then changed the product to become a, a monthly residual with fees that are paid for different things. Tesla's going to figure that one out. I like it. On a very short-term basis, um, if you're looking for a trade, it's up at seven, almost eight dollars today, two fifty-four. Yeah, as a trade, and I'd have a stop of about ten points if you wanted to get it right now. I'd have a stop of about twelve points. But if it moves another six points to the upside, I would make that. I'd raise that stop a little bit disproportionately as a trade. This is just an intra-week trade, right? But as a looking out position, I I would just hold off. I'd like one more test of the 230 level, the 200 period moving, or close, I prefer it doesn't even hit it, close to the 230 level, and then we'll see what happens. So that's that's Tesla. So two, three different ways of looking at it. One is very long term. If you don't have it, uh, you, you can put it into your portfolio, a nominal position, just because it's part of your portfolio and you want to be building this on the next big move in the market that goes up, Tesla should participate. Second one is just um, uh, intra-week, if you got it right here at uh, 254, I'd have a fairly tight stop and I'd have a trading stop because uh, it's it's a very short term trade. And then looking out as a weekly chart, what would I do? I'd say wait. All right? Three different things. So that's all right. That's Tesla. Next. Okay, now we can go to the Nikkei. So Nikkei is pulling back uh, down 290 today, 30,495, right on the 200 period moving average. Uh, I don't think we made a peak D on the last move up. Let me just see. This is, there's your starting point. Uh, could I? Yeah, I could. I could go to an, an up arrow because it did go to above 80 percent. But look what happened. A, B, C. And then the stochastic failed to go over 80%, and that makes me nervous always. So this buy signal would be negated, and it was negated as it took it out in the arch formation. So, and then looking at the weekly, is that the low? Always scroll back to see that you got. I always scroll back enough to go to the exact. Look, right on the 200 period moving average, this is in 2022. There we go, peak A, peak B, peak C. Oh, and then an A, that's your starting point. So this is still an A, that is a B, and that is a C. And then you finally get your D, and then it goes E, and then it stalls. Boom, E. And now I can put a down arrow because that is the dreaded H pattern once, dreaded H pattern twice, dreaded H pattern three times, and look at that. So yes, Nikkei, be careful because... Um, I suspect, like the other indices that took out the 200 period moving averages, um, it's going to go a little bit low. Where should it stop? That's the big question for me. And I would just say that Nikkei at this particular point has been in its own orbit. It made a new multi-year, let me just have a look at this. Yeah, multi-decade, multi-decade high. Well, right there, I'm looking at the chart that I hand charted. I think that, is that the Nikkei that I've got there or the Dow? Um, I folded it all up, a huge piece of paper because I actually uh, put all these uh, pages of engineering paper, each page together because we reached such a high level. What was it, 29,000? I can't remember anymore. Um, okay, so what we're looking at here, the high that was made in the continuous contract of 30, oh, like the Dow, eh? 33,890, and the Dow right now is 30, 
2,890 is a 1,000 points lower. Isn't that interesting? Anyway, so it's starting to pull back. But the monthly chart has to give any signal again. The weekly chart has to say, I've I've gone to a sell signal. I have to go to a sell And this is what I have to give to get the peak of Yeah, there's your peak D. Now you've made the chart. Just rotate the the top in the arm. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. So I can't believe I did this a few days ago. I was asked about CCJ because we have UEC in the uranium area. And said fantastic gains, but I say we've got to be taking gains off. We've got to be we've got to be doing something. So CCJ, I said it's made. I've got an alternate count. I said at first I think it was last Friday. I said everything about this is like the like the crude oil that that peak C is an alternate count. And if I use my Chapman wave instant restart, there's a chance that this low right here will become a target to the downside, and that's right at the low of 35.90 on the 5th of, of September. So this particular technique is a really unusual one. It's called the unconventional flat base restart. And I typed it in, I said unconventional flat base restart to 36s. And we were up here. And I said, everything about this, just like, let me show you the crude oil. Look, crude oil, I have an alternate count, which says there's a chance that we can come all the way back to the 79, 78 area, right? So it's exactly the same thing and 
look, here it is, and I forgot about it. And then in the den, uh, we have Peaky saying uh, a U-turn in, this, in the uh, uraniums, and here it is. That was the low, and today we went below it. We may, we're down 35.18 we went to. So this is a particular technique that I use only rarely because it doesn't show up that often, but it's from this instant restart that I discovered decades ago. It's a, an amazing tool. I just, I, I never believe it until it works. And I say, oh my God, there it is. Anyway, so let me just do this for now. The Dow is down 104. So this is a really important session because we've taken out yesterday's low. And that just says to me that we're getting closer and closer to the target that I have of 32,500s. And that should be met in a couple of days. But the VIX index is really what you need to follow. Because as I said earlier on, if the VIX index starts to get back to just over 20, and the Dow's down to the digit, and there's it's down, that's going to make for an ugly close. And this is really important. The next hour and a half, you need to see some kind of rebound. So the Dow's only minus 40 when we 